Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSB lecture series on transmetallic chemistry. Let us continue discussion on spectroscopic methods. To begin with we started discussion on UV visible spectroscopy. So, let me continue from where I had stopped in my previous lecture. Okay, I was telling about uh, different electronic configurations uh, which are spin allowed and leopard allowed or spin forbidden or leopard forbidden with appropriate examples. Now, let us look into individual electronic configurations to identify ground terms. Now, if you see here for D1 ground state is a 2D state and then T2G and EG are spectroscopic states for D. So, of course, D orbital will be split into T2G and EG in an octahedral and of course, these things also originated from Mulliken symbols. If you see the table that I have provided, you will come to know the D state, how it splits uh, triply degenerate and doubly degenerate. So, you are all familiar with from crystal field theory T2G and EG and when we look into F orbitals that will split into 3 levels in an octahedral field, 2 triply degenerate capacity of 6, 6 electrons and this 2, 14 electrons. So, A2G is single. So, this is how it splits and we have T1G, T2G and A2G and of course, uh, the corresponding uh, you know values in DQ is also given here. This is for F orbital and this is for DR, this is the D state and this is the F state essentially it is same. So, now spectra, let us look into spectra of D1 and okay, D9 species. And now, in a free gaseous metal ion, D orbits degenerate and no DD transitions are observed. But in a complex, degeneracy is lost and mixing also takes place and now splitting into T2G and EG in case of octahedral complexes and T2 and E in case of tetrahedral complexes. So, I have given a typical spectrum here and also I am discussing the examples of hexa chloro titanate 3 minus or hexa aqua titanium 3 plus both are D1 system because titanium is in plus 3 state in both the cases. And if you just look into titanium, this uh, hexa aqua complex uh, spectrum, it looks like this with absorption maxima around 20,300 centimeter minus 1. And this is happening because of the promotion of one electron in T2G to EG level. So, magnitude of delta O depends on the nature of the ligands and affects the energy of electronic transition and hence the frequency of absorption maxima. That means, this one represents the gap between these two. Of course, you know that one how this gap varies with the ligands when we discuss it in depth classification of ligands and also we saw this one in crystal field theory and also ligand field theory or molecular orbit theory how this CFAC varies with ligand field strength. So, that is reflected in UV visible spectra of corresponding complexes. Now, I try to bring some similarities between these electronic configurations D1, D4, D6 and D9 and D2, D7, D3, D8. This is I once again repeat one electron, one more than half filled, one less than half filled, one less than completely filled. And now here are two electrons, two more than half filled, two less than half filled, two less than completely filled. So, that means here in this case D1, D6, D4, D9, we see exclusively one DD transition whereas in case of D2, D7, D3, D8, we see only three DD transitions which are of course, Laporte are allowed because of mixing and they are spin allowed. You should remember D1, D4, D6, D9 show exclusively one transition, D2, D3, D7, D8 show three transitions. And now spectrochemical series ligand field strength all play major role in deciding the values for this one absorption. The extent of splitting is related to ligand positions in the spectrochemical series. For example, if you see here the comparison with uh, titanium 3 plus kept constant and ligands are varied and of course, we are going from low field to high field. Now, you can see in case of minimum uh, gap is there in case of D1 system of chloro that is 13,000. Now, with fluoro 18,900 with water better than F. 20,300 I showed you that spectrum in the previous slide and hexa cyanotitanate the gap is very huge and as a result more energy is needed that is reflected in this value 22,300. So, now let us consider a D9 system. A D9 system you cannot get better example than hexa aqua copper 2 plus splitting of D orbital is smaller 
to D1 case here. In D1 one electron is there in T2J level, in D9 one hole is there in EJ level. So, that means we are bringing that whole formula here. So, in D1 promotion of one electron from T2G to EG is very similar to promotion of one hole from EG to T2G in case of D9 electronic configuration. Promotion of hole means basically what happens say one hole is there, yeah electron comes there and the hole will appear in T2G. That means the electron is promoted from T2G to EG that is what it says. This further simplification and to bring similarity between D1 and D9 system. So, now that D9 is inverse of D1 energy diagram holds good that means if we reverse the energy levels and do the electron transition that is very similar to D1 that is what is done here and you should not get confused with uh, tetrahedral splitting E no this is actually octahedral complex for D9 considering the whole promotion as a result what happens you take D1 and reverse it, it becomes D9. Similarly that is what I have shown exactly reverse of that of octahedral field. In case of tetrahedral it is opposite of the octahedral field 2D it becomes E and T2. Now let us look into all electronic configurations with similarities D1, D6, D4 and D9. I have seen here of course I have already mentioned. You remember we are considering only high spin complexes in all the cases, high spin complexes where tetrahedral or octahedral whatever the electronic configuration from D1 to D9 we are considering high spin complexes. So, it now D1, D6, D4, D9 for tetrahedral and octahedral is given here. So, tetrahedral complexes are always high spin is it true? Yes. May, may be exception in some cases let us not worry about this at this juncture. Now see D1 and D6, D4 and D9 octahedral and D4 and D9 and D1 and D6 tetrahedral have similarities. So, all these electronic configurations of octahedral and tetrahedral can be combined into a single diagram called Orgel diagram which describes the qualitative way of the effect of electronic configuration with one electron, one more electron than half field shell one less electron than half full shell and one less than half filled shell. Now, you can write a common orgel diagram to show all possible transitions for both octahedral and tetrahedral for configurations D1, D6, D4 and D9. So, this is how you can represent through one orgel diagram. So, now it is very easy if we remember this one we should be able to see the transition which is a ground term from where the electron is going from which ground term to the which excited state which higher state or home or to lumo state you should be able to tell this uh, orgel diagram is good for high spin complexes of both octahedral and tetrahedral for these four configurations electronic configurations. Similarly, we can also do analysis for D2, D3, D7 and D8. Now, you consider D2 and D8 have similarities because two electrons and two holes and this one in an octahedral field we have this electronic configuration and the electron goes to the excited state would have 1 1 in this fashion. So, now two possibilities are there electron in may be promoted from dxz or dyz to dz square or dx square minus y square and you should remember less energy is needed to promote an electron to dz square than dx square minus y square again you try to bring this one the similarity with the John Taylor distortion where we have tetragonal elongation and tetragonal compression it is like tetragonal elongation is preferred, tetragonal compression is not preferred where we will be having 4 weaker bonds and 2 stronger bonds whereas in case of uh, tetragonal elongation 2 longer bonds or 2 weaker bonds and 4 stronger bonds are there in the same sense less energy is needed to promote an electron to dz square than dx minus y square that means we can have this electronic configuration or we can have this electronic configuration if we have this one more energy transition whether this one is less energy transition because when the electron is promoted or dz square is much lower in energy compared to dx minus y square. So, electrons are spread around in all three directions x, y, z reducing the electron electron repulsion when you put electron into dz square. On the other hand if you put electrons to more electrons to xy plane as there is a more electron repulsion will be there in the xy plane because we have 4 ligands in it that is it. So, in both the cases electrons are promoted and another high energy state will be formed thus 4 energy levels will be there. When 4 energy levels are there you can anticipate 3 transitions. So, that means for d2 ground term is 3f 
and 4 excited states will be there and a ground state contains 2 electrons with parallel spins, but these states contain electrons with opposite spins and are ignored. So, you can ignore these terms then we will be left with only this term and this term these 2 terms are there they can have transitions. Now, p orbits are not split that will remain so that f will be split into a 2 g t 1 g and t 2 g thus 3 transitions are possible we have 1, 2, 3, 4 are there. So, you can see 1, 2 and 3, 3 transitions are possible. So, that means d 2, d 8, d 7, d 3 show 3 transitions whereas, d 1, d 4, d 6, d 9 show only 1 transition in d d spectrum. So, now let us consider hexa aqua vanadium 3 plus complex here we are seeing 3 transitions and it is a D2 system, but if you look into the spectrum looks like only 2 transitions why that is happening ligand field strength of water results in transitions occurring close to crossover point. So, we are introducing another term called crossover point I shall explain that one later this is the crossover point here they are very similar in energy this is the 3 T 1 G P and 3 T 2 G P F and they are not resolved they overlap as a result one broad pairs along with this one high energy one that means instead of 3 you can see 2 because the second and third have very similar energies first and second has very similar energies as a result they are not resolved. That means vanadium 3 plus ion with 3 different ligands will show 3 distinct peaks. So, in this case what happens if we have 3 different ligands what would happen then they will be well separated as a result you can see 3 distinct transitions whereas in case of hexa aqua or maybe homolyptic tetral complexes it is likely that we may end up seeing only 2 transitions because other 2 are very spacely closed. In a nickel 2 plus a D2 system with 2 holes in E g and promoting 1 or 2 electrons to E g means transferring the holes to T 2 g level 3 p is not split again and degenerate and only square planar geometry p is split but whereas in octahedral geometry it is not split in tetrahedral also it is not split 3 f is split into again 3 states and will be inverted and 3 a 2 g will be the ground term now. We had this higher energy term in case of d 2 now in d 8 3 a 2 g will be lowest in energy and according just reverse it make it upside down you can see the energy levels of d 8 system. Similarly, d 7 is similar to d 2 and d 3 is similar to d 8 in an octahedral environment. So, now chromium 3 a D3 system is expected to show 3 peaks all these cases can be combined into a single diagram called again orgel diagram which describes qualitative way of the effect of electronic configuration with the 2 electrons and 2 more electrons than a half filled shell, 2 less electrons than a full shell, 2 less than a half filled shell. So, now we can write one more orgel diagram and I have shown electronic configurations to bring similarities 2 electrons and then we will be having 2 holes here and 3 electrons and then we have 3 holes and then tetrahedral also same thing. So, that means we have some similarities. So, now uh, all these things put together for both tetrahedral and octahedral in a very similar way we wrote for d 1, d 6, d 4 and d 9 we can also write here for d 2, d 7, d 3 and d 8 and this is how it looks like. But you can see one notice this is little bit gone upwards and this is little bit gone downwards. If you see the symmetry is very similar. So, I will come to that one later. This is for D 2 octahedral, D 7 octahedral, D 3 tetrahedral, D 8 tetrahedral and here it is opposite D 8 octahedral, D 3 octahedral, D 7 tetrahedral was here octahedral is tetrahedral and D 2 tetrahedral exactly opposite happens. And if it is ground state is this one ground state is this one for tetrahedral and then if it is ground state is this one and ground state is this one for D 2 and D 8 octahedral is this one is ground state for D 8 tetrahedral this one is the ground state. So, you can very nicely analyze and remembering this orgel diagram should be a problem for just we have 2 orgel diagrams to explain uh, all D D transitions except D 5, D 0 and D 10. So, you can see the transition 1 transition and the second transition and the third transition. You can see here this is the electronic spectrum of D 8 system hexa aqua nickel 2 plus you can see here 3 transitions are labeled here. Why that is curved I shall discuss here. So, now we have 2 3 T 1 G states 
one each for 3 p as well as 3 f state. So, we have to mention the bracket parenthesis both t 1 g states are curved because they have the same symmetry and they interact with each other. That means, inter electron repulsions lower the energy of the lower state and increases the energy of the higher state. When they come together like this they were supposed to intercross the energy of the lowest one is lowered and the energy of the higher one is increased. So, this effect is much more marked on the left of the diagram because two levels are close in energy. That means, if the lines have been straight they would have crossed each other which implies that at crossover two electrons in one atom have the same symmetry and the same energy this is impossible prohibited by non crossing rule. As a result what happens you can see that kind of anomaly. So, instead of going straight it is deflected upward to avoid this one and the same way this one was going straight to intercross it does not crash but it comes down. As a result what happens there is a marked difference in the absorption wavelengths for both observed and theoretically predicted. The state of same symmetry cannot cross each other. So, combined Orgel diagram I have shown here if it is gone something like this you can see something like this they would have crossed at this point to avoid this crossing this is not permitted it is going up and it is coming low. As a result what happens when we look into experimentally this will be having lower energy and this will be having higher energy than the theoretical values. Let us compare those values here. So, the mixing of R inter electronic repulsion which causes the bending of the lines is expressed by Raka parameters B and C and B and C can be calculated from linear combination of exchange integrals and coulomb integrals, okay. but they are obtained empirically from the spectra of the free ions, free gaseous ions. So, now we will see here. So, no mixing and with mixing and then you can see here no mixing means you can see higher energy this is the energy and this is the one when you mixing this much drops and where this much increases here. So, that means now we have to make correction and we have to compensate so that the experimental value matches with the theoretical one for theoretical prediction we have to make some corrections using Rakha parameters. For transition between the same multiplicity states B is enough to explain the position of the bands you should remember the transition between the same multiplicity set the 2s plus 1 value same if the transition occurs then only B is good enough to explain the position of the bands for different multiplicity we need both B and C. In D3 for V2 plus ion separation between 4f and 2g is 4b plus 3g because here this is also different this is also different as a result we have to use both and b value is approximately this one and c is 4 times b. So, that you should be able to add this correction in the spectrum here. You can write these corrections and then add or subtract then once it will try to match. Now, let us see let us consider this uh, chromium 3 plus b and c are known and b is 918 and C is 4133. So, now the possible transitions observed okay, are 14,900 and 22,700, 34,400. With this one predicted ones are here 14,900, no problem because it is not affected, this one is not affected. And whereas this one predicted and it is coming down, so it, it comes down little bit and now it goes up here in this one observed one. So, now we have to make this correction here for correction due to the mixing of P and F terms energy of 41 g increases by an amount x and this one decreases by an amount x. So, now we will see that. So, if we add these values the B relates to free ion and the apparent value of B prime in a complex is always less than that of free ion value because electron on the metal can be delocalized into molecular orbitals covering both metal and the ligands. Molecular orbital theory talks about delocalizing the electrons between metal and ligand and use of B uh, prime improves the agreement this delocalization is called nephilaxetic effect. We also see these things in case of cyanide complexes why cyanide complexes also show very different strong field nature is because of nephilaxetic effect which is given by beta equals B prime over B and beta increases as delocalization increases always less than 1 and then B prime can be anywhere between 0 0.07 to 0 0.09 B. If all the transients are then 
used using this formula, we should be able to match the predicted one. So now with correction added, you can see of course here no correction is needed. With correction what happens, it comes very close to it corrected one. 7, 300 is fine, I mean no issues. And now it is 300 less and here it's 300 more. That means now when the value is 34,400, 400 can be acceptable correction. And then here is 300 is acceptable, whereas here it is exactly the same. So this is how we can make correction to the theoretical values to match that one with observed values obtained from electronic spectra of corresponding complexes. So now uh, spectra of D5 is a high spin complex. For example, if you take Mn2 plus or iron 3 plus, examples are given here in these cases. DD transients are strictly uh, forbidden. Ground state has uh, you know 6s term with 11 excited states, they are listed here. Transition probabilities are extremely low. Of course, you know if the electron goes like this, it has to sit something like this here. So that is not permitted. So that is the reason DD transitions are spin forbidden in case of D5. In some cases what happens reversal of both the spins and whereas here reversal of only one spin is there and of course they may be very very weak and they can be totally ignored. So in an octahedral field these four splits into 10 states. Now these four will be split into 10 states because G will split into 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 you should remember and then F will be split into 3, 3, 1 and D will be split into 3 and 2 and P does not split. So that is the reason we will be having about 10 states plus 1, 11 states will be there that you can see in this one here. So this is how the spectrum looks like, manganese 2, hexaqua manganese has a D5 high spin electronic configuration, all D orbits are occupied with one electron each. None of the possible DD transition is spin allowed. In case of D5 system, none of the transits are spin allowed. Since for any transition the spin of the electron must be reversed, both higher energy EG orbits contain already one electron according to Polisin exclusion principle, no two electrons can have the same spin. That is the problem, okay. That is the reason uh, spin rule says it should be 0, delta S equals 0. All possible transitions are very weak and as a result hexa aqua manganese complex is pale in color. The ligands in a complex vibrate about mean positions. So the crystal field strength of DQ varies about a mean value, thus the energy for a particular transition varies about a mean value and hence absorptions are broad because of several vibration rotational transitions also occurring simultaneously when an electron is excited from one ground state to one state to another one. Okay? The bands are extremely weak in these cases, you can see that is reflected in its value, epsilon value 0 0.02 to 0 0.03. And for allowed transitions, it is 5. Some bands are broad and some are sharp. Spin allowed bands are invariably broad. Okay. All spin allowed transitions are invariably broad and spin forbidden are sharp. The same thing I have shown here. So now this is the one for D5 electronic configuration. I have shown here for G is split into 3 states, 3, 3, 2, 1. They have similar energy and D is split into 2 states, triple and, and double and 4p is single state and f is split into triply generate, triply generate and 1. And now uh, transition would take place here and this whatever the transition we saw here are listed here with corresponding energy. So Argel energy level diagram for magnus okay, D5, uh, for Td omit G, okay, for the D you can only use this one but reverse it and omit G. So it becomes Argel diagram for tetrahedral geometry. So now let us look into Tanube Sukuno diagrams. Simple Argel diagrams versus TS diagrams. We have to see the difference. The Argel diagrams look very simple, whereas TS diagrams look little complicated. When you look into it, you will come to know. And Argel diagrams treat only high spin complexes, especially weak field complexes, whereas TS diagram can accommodate spectral information for both weak field and strong field complexes. And Argel diagram is good for spin allowed transitions when the number of observed peaks is greater than or equal to the number of empirical parameters DQ modified Raka parameters B and bending constant X. So although there is a provision to add low spin states to Argel diagram, 
TS diagrams are commonly used to interpret spectra of both weak and strong field ligand. You can make provision in case of Argyle diagrams also to allow low spin states because once you start writing, we may have to add other 3 or 4 electronic configurations and incorporating them depending upon how many electrons are there and how many holes are there, that should not be a problem. However, TS diagrams are more polished and more refined to interpret spectra of both weak field and strong field ligands for high spin as well as low spin complexes. TS diagrams show how the energy levels change with dq, but they differ in several ways. Ground state is always taken as abscissa, x axis or horizontal axis and provides a constant reference point. Other energy levels are plotted relative to this. That means the ground state is considered as x axis. And low spin terms that is states where the spin multiplicity is lower than the ground state are also included. In order to make the diagram general for different metal ions with the same electronic configuration and also to allow for different ligands having different extent of ligand field strength, both of which affect dq and as well as b and b prime, the axis are plotted in units of energy by b versus dq by b. So, here it compensates so that you can consider everything all kind of ligands. Only thing is different diagram is required for different electronic configuration. So, that means to accommodate all these parameters you have to have one diagram for one electronic configuration. D1 you should have one electronic configuration that can explain everything. Similarly, you should have D9 one more. So, now I have shown here a typical D6 system here. So, hexa fluoro cobalt 3 D7 S2 is the 3 electrons are D6 system. D6 system one weak field ligand, one strong field ligand, both are shown here. So, D2 vanadium 3 plus no fundamental difference between strong and weak fields. D6 there is discontinuity at 100 dq, yes you can see here 100 dq that corresponds to 20, you can see here discontinuity is there. At this point pairing of electrons occurs, the reason why discontinuity is there pairing occurs and then high spin complex becomes low spin complex. To the left we have high spin complexes weak field ligands, to the right we have low spin complexes. As a result the one which was ground term become excited term. So, now we can see here this 5T2G comes here now and instead this A1G becomes ground term here once after crossing this value. So, one should look into it carefully in all diagrams, TS diagrams. I am explaining only one example here. To the right we have low spin complexes, free ion ground term 5D in octahedral field. So, singlet 1I of high energy is there, these are all there, you can see they are listed. So, A1G is important, this state is greatly stabilized by the ligand and drops rapidly in energy as ligand field strength increases. So, this one is greatly and it becomes ground state, ground term here. And now this one, this was all the way here, it becomes excited state now. If you take uh, hexafluorocobalt at 3 minus high spin blue in color can show you one peak at 13,000 centimeter minus 1, whereas in case of this one low spin 2 transits are seen instead of 3 here you can see of course it is a D6 here obviously we will see only 1 whereas here you can see 2 because they are very closely spaced. Let me stop here and maybe in my next lecture I shall start discussing about uh, NMR ok. NMR also I am not going to go into detail tell you little bit about basics and jump into explaining or interpreting spectra of simple compounds to multinuclear complexes. So, where you will come across you know phosphorus coupling, selenium coupling, platinum coupling, rhodium coupling very interesting and also platinum. And except for rhodium and phosphorus many of them have isotopes which are low abundant. For example, if you look into a platinum 195 platinum is there, 196 platinum is there, 195 is there, about 34 percent rest is NMR inactive. And similarly, if you go for selenium it is only 7.6 percent 77L is NMR active, rest is NMR inactive. In those cases we observe peaks called satellite peaks. I should make you familiar with uh, uh, writing or drawing spectrum or sketching and also look how they can be split with the different couplings and other things. Until then have an excellent time reading whatever I discussed so far. Once again I thank you for your kind attention, see you in my next lecture that is going to be 57th lecture.